This is uh, the recording of uh, sections 16 and 17 of uh, chapter 13. Continuing with neutron stars. Well, neutron stars can also produce uh, bursts of X-rays. And the uh, mechanism is some something that we have seen in the past, except that we saw it with uh, white dwarfs. If you have a neutron star in a binary system, it can acquire mass from the companion. And this mass, as it uh, is attracted by the gravity of the neutron star, will speed up and will be producing, as it uh, reaches the neutron star, will be producing, uh, will, will, will be colliding and producing X-rays. So it produces um, kind of a low level amount of uh, X-rays, but um, uh, at some point, it can produce a powerful burst of X-rays. And objects that produce this, th these uh, bursts are known as X-ray bur bursters. And they emit the X-rays, always at low level, but all of a sudden they have a, an increase and then decrease, uh, a rapid decrease, uh, decrease that ha uh, happens in a few seconds, in say in 20 seconds. This phenomenon has been seen several times in the, the Milky Way and it is represented here by the drawing, the cartoon, it shows one star passing gas to the other one and as gas, uh, the gas accretes, it form produces this low level um, of uh, X-rays but when enough material has uh, reached the star then it can begin, it can begin a thermonuclear reaction, a fusion reaction on the surface and creating a burst of X-rays. <coughs> but it fades uh, relatively rapid. Well, again, this is a different cartoon, but um, the mechanism for those bursts, not for the low level radiation, but uh, for the bursts, is similar to the novas in, in a white dwarf. Novas are produced in binary systems with a white dwarf when they begin to they accumulate enough uh, uh, hydrogen to start fusing and producing a flash. And uh, in the case of uh, neutron stars, they and the X-ray bursters, they, they collect the gases from the companion star do it that is. Uh, crashing down on the surface to produce the low-level low X-rays, but at some point the hydrogen gas becomes compressed and heated, and then it, it begins to produce um, a layer of helium, and, and this is uh, over the entire neutron star, and when the, when the helium reaches about one meter thick, then it fuses and ignites, producing a, a, a big explosion that produces X-rays. So, in the case of a nova, we have hydrogen fusion on a white dwarf, and here we have um, helium fusion on a neutron star producing X-rays. In summary, we can have uh, neutron stars colliding and they produce heavy elements and you can, we can have neutron stars in binary systems and they can be producing the X-ray bursters by helium fusion, but uh, also they can be producing the X-ray sources when they, have, uh, when they are uh, in binary systems pulsating. And this uh, the X-ray bursters is uh, an analogy to what happens for NOVA, the NOVA explosions. Well, these are the questions corresponding to sections um, 16. Again, I ask you to read them and try to answer them. You might encounter them in the next quiz. For the last section of the chapter, we talk um, about something extra, uh, a little bit more exotic and um, something that would be beyond neutron stars and this is uh, 
up to now it's just only a uh, proposition that uh, quark stars can exist these quark stars would be composed of whatever is in whatever is inside of the protons and neutrons so here we go into particle physics a little bit um, the elementary particles like protons and neutrons have something as their component they have something called quarks and each of those has uh, three quarks and they come in different vari varieties and we call them up and downs and they interact with one another by means of the exchange of uh, a particle known as the gluon well something pe peculiar about these uh, three particles is that they cannot escape was as they come out uh, other particles are produced and they end up being in groups again leaving one behind so we can we have seen particles composed of three particles of three quarks but also of two uh, quarks but never by themselves and what happens if we have uh, for instance the neutron star all of these are, compo are are made out of the neutron star is made out of protons and neutrons but if the density is larger, if we have more mass and there is some more compression, then it could be that these bags, this is the actual name given to these uh, surroundings, the bags can merge and form something in uh, a larger bag in, in which the protons, I mean the quarks, could be moving in a, a quasi-free inside of the bag. So that object would be kind of uh, similar to what happens in neutron star, except that all the quarks would be deconfined. They are not confined inside of their own respective bags, but they are into, they form a much larger bag. Well, it is not known if these uh, objects exist. It is known that this uh, state of matter exists. It was obtained, uh, was uh, observed both in uh, CERN and in Brookhaven uh, about good uh, eight years ago. Well, what, what would be the limit for the existence of a, of a quark star? We know that for a neutron star, um, that for a white dwarf, the, the limit is 1.4 solar masses. For a neutron star, the limit, which is known as the oppenheimer volcker limit, is about three solar masses. But we know that past these three solar masses, we would go into black holes. So where do these guys fit, the quark stars? Well, somewhere in there. There's, nobody has a definite answer for that uh, point. But um, what uh, it is known is that if they exist, they are going to be denser than neutron star. And um, for escaping from them, you would have to have a huge speed. <clears throat> Again, if um, the stellar corpse is larger than three solar masses, then um, the, there would be a, a, um, a, a large compression, the, so large that it would um, overcome the so-called Pauli exclusion principle that uh, limits the possibility of having compression, uh, large compressions or infinitely large compressions. And um, in this case, it would uh, collapse everything into a single point. And we're going to see the black holes in the next uh, chapter. But um, the, the, the situation is that it will be, uh, everything would collapse down to a point And in a summary, we can talk about the four objects. Three of them are known to exist. This is the white dwarf. The mass is going to be less than 1.4. The neutron star is going to go from 1.4 to 3, the masses. And black holes are expected to go beyond 3 solar masses. And quark stars, well, they have to fit somewhere in there. It's not uh, known if they exist. Well, 
something that we can say is that in going from, if, if we have something larger than three solar masses, it's going to go through all these paths in, while compressing, and at some point it will reach the stage of a quark star on its way to becoming a black hole. Four more questions about this section. And with this, we are done with the chapter. This is an interesting summary that is presented uh, in uh, this two-dimensional axis. This would be mass. So this would be the mass of a star as it begins to its existence, where this, will, this would be time. It's not to scale, of course. But um, if you, you can have a small star that is uh, being produced as a protostar, but uh, if it happens to be less than 0 0.08, it will never become a main sequence star. It will never shine because of fusion. It will shine on the infrared. So it will continue as a brown dwarf through uh, the age of the universe, actually. Um, if the mass is a bit larger, between 0 0.8 and 0 0.4, then the protostar will produce something that is known as a red dwarf that will eventually become a ball of helium. It will doesn't have enough masses to compress helium enough to start fusing into other elements. That happens only if uh, you're uh, with masses uh, larger than 0 0.4. In that case, uh, there will be uh, hydrogen fusion, helium fusion, both in shell and in core. And when it's in, because of the shell fusions, it will enlarge the star, it will make it a giant star, and it will become a planetary nebula as it loses mass and eventually leaving the core behind, and the core will be known as a white dwarf. If we are talking about something larger than eight solar masses, then the process is more or less the same, except that uh, it will have enough mass as to keep on fusing into other element, elements all the way uh, uh, up to iron, at which point there will be an explosion into a supernova and uh, leaving behind a neutron star, not a neuron star, but a neutron star. And um, if you have masses larger than 25, then the mass of the revenant here is going to be larger than three solar masses, and this will produce a black hole in the end. We, we have a different uh, depiction of this evolution, how it goes from being a cloud to producing um, the nebulas, the stars, and we, as always, we conclude with a summary of the key ideas. We have um, the low mass below eight solar masses, main sequence stars becomes a giant when we have shell hydrogen shell fusion, and it becomes a horizontal branched star when we have core helium fusion and it becomes an asymptotic giant branch when it, when we have helium shell fusion and then we're going to have the stellar winds and the thermal pulses ejecting a lot of, uh, of the mass out producing a planetary nebula and uh, leftover is going to be a white dwarf this is the residue of all of that and the maximum mass for this white dwarf to exist is 1.4 solar masses We can have um, white dwarfs in binary systems, and they uh, take gas from the companion, and they can produce uh, explosions known as novas. We can also have uh, more uh, gas being transferred, and they can produce type 1a supernovas. We can have um, 
at the core of the high masses, we can have a sequence of fusions, and it's going to go from hydrogen to helium to carbon to neon, oxygen, silicon, and eventually iron. And at that point, um, the iron will uh, start collapsing and until it reaches n uh, nuclear density. And at that point, this will break into pieces, producing an explosion. And that explosion will expand into the atmosphere of the, the outer layers of the star and producing a type 2 supernova explosion. Uh, among the products that are produced in that uh, explosion are uh, neutrinos and this flood of neutrinos uh, they were detected from the supernova 1987a and the um, uh, and the observ and the, observ the neutrino observatories in um, uh, Michigan and also in um, Japan 20 neutrinos were detected Well, the, the core of a high mass, if the, if the mass is uh, between 8 and 25, will become a neutron star. The core of more massive stars will become quark stars or black holes. The neutron star is extremely dense and uh, it is not too large, it's uh, like 20 kilometers in diameter. The maximum mass of a neutron star is three solar masses. Neutron stars can be producing radiation because of their rotation and the strong magnetic field. So when we have a rotating neutron star, it can be a pulsar. And the radiation can be visible, x-rays, radio waves. And these objects that produce x-rays are uh, neutron stars in closed binary systems. Also, we can have um, helium fusion on the surface of a neutron star, and that would be an X-ray burster. Well, this is what you would be doing if um, we were in class. You would be following the lecture tutorial for uh, to understand the stellar evolution, and. Um, it's a very simple exercise. This is the first, the pre-activity question. I ask you to read it and answer it. And um, here we, you're supposed to be placing. Sorry about that. Uh, you're supposed to be placing. Um, the different stages of the evolution of uh, uh, stars to complete the diagram. I ask you to read this in your booklet and complete uh, answer the, the question. More questions that I would ask uh, if we were in class, please read them, answer them. So, concluding, will the sun someday cease to shine? Well, yes, it will become uh, a red giant and then a planetary nebula and we'll leave a uh, white dwarf behind. What's a nova and how does it differ from a supernova? Well, a nova is just an explosion of hydrogen gas fusing on the surface of a white dwarf. And a supernova is an explosion that destroys the white dwarf. Well, that's a type 1A supernova. A type 2 supernova is one that, uh, after a sequence of different types of fusion, it will destroy the star, leaving either a neutron star behind or a white uh, or a black hole. What are the origins of all those elements? Well, they come from uh, uh, all the fusions in the 
and the big stars, but at the same time uh, through collisions of neutron stars, supernova and colliding neutron stars. What are cosmic rays? Well, they are just particles, electrons, protons, neutrons that come from uh, outside. They can be produced in um, in stars. They can also be produced in, in uh, supernova explosions. What's a pulsar? Well, it's a rotating neutron star that produces it has a strong magnetic field that um, produces radiation through the poles. And three more questions for your enjoyment. And I believe we're close to the end of this section.